interrupts a very important concept in this little device that uh, really is a game changer at some times. So what happens when you trigger an interrupt is, as I've explained before in the previous videos, if you watch them, is whenever an interrupt is triggered, it, the program immediately stops what it's doing, pushes whatever it's doing on the stack, just to, you know, puts it on the back burner for now, and then immediately jumps to this the interrupt vector. And it goes to the ISR that you specify. It can it's not necessary to call it ISR, it could be whatever you want, but ISR interrupt service routine is pretty descriptive. So I like that uh, terminology. So how do you enable interrupts and how exactly do we implement them in the program? So what you do is just a normal setup. It uh, You do the bank switch as usual, just to make sure that you're working in the correct memory bank, that it's not writing to something it's not supposed to. So what we have, we're going to consult the data sheet again. So you go, you search for interrupts. Where's, where are the interrupts? There they are. If you want, you can read through all this, but I'm going to give you the quick and dirty of it. So first register, the incon register, the interrupt control register. So you want to set specific values in this register to make sure you enable the interrupts correctly. So what, it's really up to you which, which event you want to actually trigger the interrupt. But uh, the basics are, you're always going to have to set the global interrupt enable bit. This is going to allow the thing to actually accept interrupts at all. If you don't set this, it's never going to be interrupted. This as well, this is for specific, this is for peripherals, and just everything input output related to the pick. And here are a few extra interrupt enables. If you don't want it, set it to zero. Just do not set it to one, else something uh, bad happens. And uh, it, it just obeys unpredictably. So whatever you don't want, keep it zero, and what you want, keep it one. So let's say we want to, okay, so we're always going to actually enable the interrupt. So we're going to bit set f int con the last bit. So we're going, we're setting the the bit that is actually this bit, that bit. And we're going to set that bit as well. And we're going to set bit four for our sake, uh, int con six. And then we're going to set in con four. Now, it is um, in con four is basically um, you can actually go read about it in the data sheet. It uh, it enables the int zero external interrupt. So the int zero external interrupt is effectively when you push a specific button, whatever that button, if the, if that button stays changes state, if, or if it goes high and then zero again, just a basic button press. Then it goes, then it goes back to, um, then it triggers an interrupt, which is most of the time the type of functionality that we actually want. So we just have to go to the data sheet and see which pin actually is connected to int zero. So RB zero is connected to int zero. So what do we want? We want to take an input on RB zero. What do we do if we want to take an input from on RB0? We go and do the whole I.O. process. So we clear if the latch of B, we bit set if the uh, tris B, the first one, and then we clear if ansel B. So we clear whatever past values were on that um, port, and then we set that specific pin as an input, then we just clear all the inputs uh, as analog inputs or outputs just to tell the compiler we're not interested in taking any analog readings in this stage, just to make it function a bit more predictably. So we've successfully just set up an interrupt. And if you, so we can just uh, go to this. So let's say we just go to an infinite loop and then we, this should compile first try. Let's try. And we just need to add the existing item. And we just need to add this. 
and then we should be good to go. Okay, so we're going, we're going, we're going. Nothing's happening as we wanted to. We're going, we're going, we're going. But let's say we trigger an interrupt. Let's let this program run just for a quite a long time. It's not doing anything. It's not breaking or anything. So let's say we want to give a little stimulus to RB0, have it pulse it high just for a moment. And so if we run it, it should. Okay, it compiles. There. It just interrupted it. So the interrupt actually does work. And then it jumps to the interrupt service routine. And then the program breaks. Why did it break? Because the ISR only has an end next to it. So within the ISR itself, it, has, it actually does execute whatever you want it to be executing. So first things first on the ISR, if you have multiple interrupts, then you actually have to check which one. But in this case, we only have a single interrupt. So we can just say bit clear if, and uh, we clear if the interrupt flag, and we go back to here, and you have to actually see where the interrupt flag is. So in the incon register, int zero is very important. This is why it's specifically in the incon register. So interrupt flag bit. So what happens whenever an interrupt does occur? It immediately sets the interrupt flag for that interrupt, just to tell the comp just to comp tell the programmer and the pick which interrupt did occur, because that's the only way it can distinguish between multiple interrupts at once. But as long as the interrupt flag is set, it will continuously trigger interrupts whenever that uh, whenever the interrupts are actually enabled. So what happens when the interrupt is actually triggered? It turns off this bit right here. It turns it off so that interrupts aren't enabled whilst you're servicing the interrupt, else an interrupt will constantly be occurring before you're even done servicing the next interrupt. So first things first, you clear the interrupt flag bits for the specific register that you're working in. So we're going to clear that. And also like with the uh, labels, you can also, if you want, use instead of numbers you can use the name of the specific bit that you want to clear like here it's it's called in zero if and the compiler does know what you mean by that but most of the time i like to use the just the normal no, numbers of the bits it just it just gives a little more certainty but this uh it's, it's a pretty reliable method and it just makes the remembering work a bit less so first thing first you clear the interrupt, you do whatever you want. Let's just say you want to move a specific value to port A. It's not going to do anything because port A is not enabled as an input at all. So move working file, port A. It clears, so first, so you first have to clear it, do whatever you want, and then you re-enable the interrupt and that global pin, because this pin is currently set to zero. See, it's set to zero currently. So what you want is to set it to one again. And after all the interrupts have already been triggered. So you set it to zero and then there's a specific uh, command to make it return from an interrupt and that is called ret fee. So whenever you say ret fee, it returns from an interrupt and automatically sets this. The data set sheet says it automatically sets this bit again. But uh, just for just for some added sense of security, you can just set it this back to just set it yourself and just say red fee. It's not going to do any damage. Just going to make sure it actually does set it. So we let's see if we run to this interrupt again, and then it should okay. So it's running, running, running. We interrupt it. Okay, it actually does interrupt. It clears the interrupt flag as it should, moves that, moves that, and it re-enables the interrupt again. Red fee returns from the interrupt, and boom. This is where it was, when it still was uh, doing the interrupt thing again. And yes, that is the, that is interrupts.